Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of News Dose, where we give you all of the latest news in the game industry. And we got another big studio departure this week as Rod Ferguson, the studio head of Xbox's The Coalition, the studio behind Gears 4 and 5, is leaving to join another studio. This just kind of popped up out of nowhere. Rod Ferguson is both well respected among the industry and beloved by the fans, so we will talk about that and what kind of impact it will have. Also, Ninja Gaiden may be making a possible return as the studio behind the Ninja Gaiden franchise has some very interesting comments regarding that. Plus, we have plenty more to talk about, including Bleeding Edge, Minecraft, some Ubisoft news, a new PlayStation 4 game announcement, and more, so stay tuned for all of that. There is a lot to go over today, and you're not going to want to miss it. Let's start off with Ninja Gaiden, though, because for you Ninja Gaiden fans out there, I'm sure you have waited long enough, or actually far too long. I mean, really, Ninja Gaiden was once a premier franchise in the industry, especially during the original Xbox and PlayStation 2 days, or really even during the PS360 era. Games like Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 was just excellent, but over the years it seems like Ninja Gaiden was on a bit of a decline until it ultimately just vanished into the sunset. That really is too bad because I think if done right, Ninja Gaiden could make a big return with more modern hardware. As a whole, these type of hack and slash games seem to be on a bit of a rise in popularity, you know, in recent years. I mean, they have done really, really well. With that said, during an interview with IGN, Team Ninja game director Fumihiko Yasuda had a very interesting comment regarding the Ninja Gaiden franchise, and this is what he had to say. The core members of the team that worked on Ninja Gaiden wants to make a new game. We are aware that some fans wanted Ninja Gaiden more than Neo 2. Now we see a lot of ninja games like Sekiro as well, and we see a lot of good inspirations in those games, so we hope to deliver some good news one day. And as soon as I heard this, I immediately started to get excited. Not only does several Team Ninja developers want to work on a new Ninja Gaiden game, but it sounds like it could be inspired by Sekiro. That doesn't mean that it is in active development as of this moment, but I imagine that if they were, they may take some ideas from Sekiro, which is certainly a good idea. Sekiro, after all, did just win Game of the Year, but something you also need to remember is that Team Ninja has also been working on a franchise that is inspired by another one of From Software's games, Dark Souls. The game I'm talking about is, of course, Neo, and the thing about Neo is it's not just a good clone of Dark Souls. No, it's actually much more than just that. It really has its own identity, even if there is some similarities between the two. It also goes to show you that Team Ninja can put out very high quality games like this, so what if Team Ninja decided to bring back Ninja Gaiden inspired by Sekiro? I think the two could fit very nicely together. Team Ninja is a very talented studio, Ninja Gaiden is a great franchise with a good foundation, and I could easily see this game making a return in a big way. Make it really difficult, give it some cool and creative combat, and let's do this thing. What do you think though? Would you like to see Ninja Gaiden return? Let me know in the comments below. Moving on, we have a few Xbox related topics to talk about. The first of which is the Initiatives game, the all-star studio formed by Xbox. It does seem like we have been talking a lot about the initiative recently. We've learned that not only will we more than likely see whatever game they are working on in 2020, but we also had Phil Spencer teasing what they're working on by saying they are working on old things in new ways. Obviously, a lot of people took this to mean that the initiative may be working on an old franchise and possibly rebooting it, and if that is true, it very well could be Perfect Dark. Still though, that is all just speculation for the time being, but now Phil Spencer has once again tweeted about them in response to Drew Murray, and by this point, I feel like they may just be taunting us. Uh, either way though, in this tweet, he is actually playing the Initiatives game, which is a pretty big milestone. Now we know that for a fact they have made significant progress in this mystery game, which means we are likely going to be seeing this game very soon. I think if there was any doubt before that this game was not going to be shown in 2020, there really shouldn't be now. 
this game will almost certainly be showing up at E3 in just a few short months, which is quickly shaping up for Xbox. I mean, I've seen a lot of speculation around whatever this game could possibly be, and up until recently, people were almost always predicting that we wouldn't see this game until at least 2021, so this is a surprise in how fast they have been going with this game. As for whatever this game could possibly be, we only have a few hints to work with for the moment, but there is a checkpoint system as well as Sean Slayback joked about having them work, you know, next time Phil visits. That's not really much of a hint as a lot of different genres has checkpoints from racing games to more linear shooting games and even big open world games like The Witcher 3. Regardless, I'll be excited to see whatever they're working on. Now unfortunately, I do have some bittersweet news as Rod Ferguson, the studio head of the Coalition, has announced he is leaving to join Blizzard to oversee Diablo 4. As a big Gears fan, this news was huge for me personally. If there is any game that has had a profounding impact on me, it's absolutely Gears of War, and for me, Rod Ferguson has always been one of the most recognizable faces and personalities in the industry. Really, him and Cliff Blazinski were huge for the Gears franchise, and then to see Rod move over to the Coalition was a very big move, and I think he did a great job with both Gears 4 and 5. Specifically 5 though, as I think that game is just phenomenal, but really, Rod Ferguson has done a great job with several games, including Bioshock Infinite, which is one of the reasons he is so well respected in the industry. Though of course Diablo 4 is also a ginormous game and I'm certain Rod Ferguson will once again work his magic and help Blizzard get that shipped out the door, which may be no easy task either. If there is anybody I believe in though, it's Rod Ferguson, so this is great news for Blizzard which has now, you know, they've actually poached two Xbox members lately with Mike Ybarra and now Rod Ferguson. I would say Mike probably had a big say in Rod coming over to Blizzard. Now, as for the Gears franchise though, both Matt Booty and Rod Ferguson seems to have a lot of confidence in the team over at the Coalition, and honestly, I think they're right for that. The Coalition is very talented, and even though Rod Ferguson may not be an easy person to replace, I'm sure they'll be just fine moving forward. Now one last thing about Xbox before we move on to other topics, but we also got a little extra information about Ninja Theory's upcoming game, Bleeding Edge. In a Q&A video posted to YouTube, Ninja Theory answered a few questions regarding Bleeding Edge, and there was two things that really stood out to me. One being that Bleeding Edge will not have microtransactions, which is always a really good thing to hear. I also see people kind of say that Xbox Game Pass games need this type of stuff to survive as well, but here we're seeing no microtransactions for Bleeding Edge, though I know some people are still skeptical of this game. Really, it's a game that I just haven't seen much buzz around, but the good news here is you may have a chance to go try it out yourself in a closed beta that will be available from February 14th to the 17th. Now, this is a closed beta, so you will need to go sign up for this, but, and this is a big but, if you have Xbox Game Pass, you will automatically have access to this beta. See, Xbox Game Pass just keeps on giving. Either way, go check out Bleeding Edge out on the 14th if you're interested in that game. Moving on, Minecraft is getting a big update soon, which will be adding three new biomes. The Crimson Valley, Soul Sand Valley, and Warped Forest. Now, these are actually based on the Netherworld, and you will be able to get a new material called the Netherite, which can be used to upgrade diamond weapons. Each biome will be unique in their own ways, and for the most part, sounds like they will have a lot of enemies in them, except for the Warp Forest, which may be a little bit more tame. It does sound like a pretty sizable update and won't fully release for at least three to four months, though I, if I'm understanding it correctly, the first test version should be going out now. I've actually not played Minecraft in years, so I'm not sure how these test versions work, but if you're interested, you can go check that out. In other news, Ubisoft had a lot of new information come out today as we got to hear about their fiscal year report, which was very impressive, but some of the most interesting things that came out of Ubisoft was not in their numbers, but rather they talked a bit about Rainbow Six Siege alongside five of their upcoming AAA games. So Rainbow Six Siege actually hit 55 million players, which is outstanding. That's pretty crazy to think about, especially considering how this game launched with a lot of criticism. 
I mean, even to this day, you can go check out the Metacritic score for this game and it still sits at a 79 on PC and like uh, it's around a 74 on consoles. So yeah, it wasn't well received, but Ubisoft stuck with this game and it ended up being one of the best competitive multiplayer games of the entire decade. And now it really, I mean, it's starting to show. It just goes to show you don't give up on a game too quick as games with ongoing development really can improve a lot over time. Games like Siege, you have Sea of Thieves, and No Man's Sky is all prime examples of this. Though as I said, Ubisoft did have some other interesting things to say too, which is that they will have five big AAA games released between October of 2020 and March of 2021. So basically you're going to have one AAA game a month on average. Three of these games will be launching in 2020, while the other two will be 2021. Now we do know what three of these games will be, which is Rainbow Six Quarantine, You've God and Monsters, and Watch Dogs Legion. The other two are still mysteries, though I would expect one of them to probably be in an Assassin's Creed game, and the cool thing about all of this is, is all of these games will have an HD update for next generation consoles. So really, basically, you just got five games announced for the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. Definitely something to look forward to. Let's not forget about this generation, though, because the PlayStation 4 also had a game announced today, which is Below, developed by Capybara. Now, this game has been out for a while now on the PC and Xbox, but it is now official in that it will be heading over to the PlayStation 4 as well. It will also be getting a new game mode by the name of Explore, which does several different things, including reduced survival mechanics, no instant kills, and permanent checkpoints. So essentially, this will make the game easier to allow you to explore more of the world. This sounds like a pretty good update considering it had a lot of criticism surrounding these mechanics, and luckily, this update will also be coming to Steam as well as the Xbox version, so enjoy that when it comes out. We don't know the official release date as of just yet, but hopefully it won't take too long. Now the last thing I want to talk about real quick is that the Epic Game Store is getting more free games and as always, I will likely forget to download them myself, but for you people who actually remember, you will be able to pick up both Kingdom Come Deliverance and Aztecs on February 13th. I can't speak for Aztecs personally, but Kingdom Come Deliverance is an excellent RPG and it's actually probably one of the best of this generation, so I would highly recommend that, so definitely go check that out. I know Epic Games Store gets a lot of criticism, but these free games are a really good deal. For Steam though, I do have one last bit of good news, and that is that Metro Exodus will no longer be an Epic Games Store exclusive and will be releasing on February 15th for Steam. So, good day for PC gaming all around. Anyways though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to hit the bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Peace out.